mami. Mami, mami, mami. Oh, that's so cold. Oh, gosh, you're getting so big. Tell us your name. Look over here and tell us your name. Robert. What's your name? Ever and Nichols. <laughs> Bobby Shackles on to see. Silver buckles on his knee. When he cuts back, he'll marry me. Bonnie Bobby Shackles. I think I got lucky. Well, luck didn't have a thing to do with it. I lied and told a very eager couple from Vancouver that the owner wouldn't take back a second. <laughs> You're just telling me this so I feel guilty if I don't buy it, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Growing up, I always wanted to live in this place. Really? Did you know it was built by some old sea captain for his new bride in 1810? 1835. I got the rest of the scoop when I took the listing. Apparently, the sea captain, Andrew Freeman, deserted his wife when he found out that she'd been testing out the bedrooms with the builder of the house <laughs> while the captain was out to sea. Do you love it? Menley will like that story. She must be doing a lot better. Yeah, a whole lot better. She was, uh, well, you know what we went through last summer. But uh, then the baby came along and she seems to be a lot better. She hasn't? Nope. No, no, just at once. So who's more famous, you or Menley? I have maybe 10 minutes of notoriety every now and then, but Menley has millions of readers who are very loyal. Eh, you were pretty loyal yourself last summer. Chelsea. 
force. Oh, that's a good grade. So are these your favorite books? Mm, not really. Goosebumps are. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. I brought it on myself. Oh, I love them. Thanks so much. They're my favorite books. Oh, well, thanks. Bye, Chelsea. Bye. <laughs> Here you go, sweetheart. There you go. Hi. Hi. Sign it to Alexander and Cookie, would you please? Okay. So what's the next book going to be about? Hmm, I don't know. I'm spending a month up in New England, so maybe it'll be David Sails Around the Horn or David on the Mayflower. Can't let all that good atmosphere go to waste, can I? Unbelievable. Even better than I remember. Well, <laughs> careful, that looks as buyer's rapture. Carrie, I thought you'd be through and gone by now. <laughs> so did I, but I wasn't figuring on having to clean around no ghosts. Oh, please. Oh, Dreaming it, if that's what you're thinking. Sure, I heard footsteps upstairs, and I thought you'd come early, so I went on up. And in that baby's room, the bedspread in the crib was all wrinkled like someone had been sitting on it. And that little cradle was rocking, and there was no breeze neither because the window was shut. No, ma'am, somebody had been there. I know you. I've seen you on TV. You're the lawyer for that woman that murdered her husband. I hope she fries. Gee, thanks. Says it was self-defense. I say she's a lawyer. But not me, mister. There's definitely something wrong in that house. You set that up, right? To a ghost to quench the sale? On my honor, Adam. Is Susan Portman really innocent? Yep. Mm -hmm. Think you can get her a new trial? Absolutely. That's why I get the big bucks. I think we could use some fresh air in here. I can't believe how gorgeous this is. Look at the moldings. Hand carved, solid chestnut. Medley's gonna love this place. Come on, let's start upstairs and work our way down. <laughs> the nursery. You guys couldn't keep that cradle rocking a little bit longer. <laughs> oh, this is great. I can see Hannah in here already. She's a very rowdy kid, but she sleeps like a rock. Unlike Bobby, who, uh... Hey, I'm sorry. It hits me every once in a while. Tobias Knight? Oh, Phoebe, you scared me. Does Henry know where you are? Tobias Knight. Phoebe! Hello, Henry. Oh, hi, Elaine. Hello, Adam. Hello, Henry. Nice to see you. This is Adam Nichols, dear. You remember Adam. He used to spend his summers here. He's a lawyer now. We saw him on TV once, remember? Adam and his wife are renting Remember House for the month, Phoebe. Won't that be nice? I'm sorry. I thought she was sleeping. She must have slipped out. Come on, love. Let's go home. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, mm. there goes our ghost. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so sad when you consider she was once a full professor of history at Harvard. Now she can't remember how to tie her own scarf. You know, before she got Alzheimer's, she collected all kinds of research on these old houses. Come on, let me show you something. I think it's a wonderful idea. Why do I keep getting these disapproving vibes? I guess I'm not sure if you're as strong as you think you are. <laughs> Dr. Kingsley, I'm really better. I haven't had an anxiety attack for months. I've almost forgiven myself for Bobby. I'm taking terrific care of Hannah. I'm in great shape. I'm a parent again, a wife again, a writer again. And I have a nice, strong husband I can lean on. I think New England is a wonderful idea. I've got to admit, 
I love seeing your old confidence again. <laughs> You didn't know me when I had my old confidence. This is my new confidence. Well, okay. But remember where you've been. You're confident, but you can still be thrown by strange surroundings, new people. If you need your medication, take it. I guarantee you I won't need it. Mind if I hang on to this photograph? a great shot of the house, and I don't think I'd ever be able to get one from that angle. Sure you could. If you had a plane, you'd fly around with a photographer and have aerials taken of all my listings. Smart, huh? You asked about babysitters? Yeah. I have a terrific girl all lined up for you. My fiancé's daughter. Fiancé? That's what you call them when you start talking about combining your furniture. John Nelson, you don't know. Well, congratulations. <laughs> I'm hoping to get brownie points for this daughter for getting her this job. She's already got me pegged as the wicked stepmother. I could see you as that. I... Hey, what is going on? A body's washed ashore. They think it's that girl who drowned. Who drowned? Vivian Covey. She and her husband were snorkeling a few days ago off Seaport Island, and one of those sudden squalls came up. Vivian Covey? And maybe you knew her. She used to be Vivian Carpenter. Oh, yeah, I remember her as a sweet little kid with braces. She's only been married three months. Who's the husband? Scott Covey. He's a business manager at the Academy Beach Theater. Hardly social enough for the Carpenters. A really nice guy. That should dry Scott Covey's tears in a hurry. Yeah. That's a nasty thing to say. The day before Vivian disappeared, I was showing her and her husband houses. And they were very happy together, very much in love. In fact, they were talking about starting a family. Now, why don't you go check around? Why don't all of you go check around and find out how many other boaters were almost swamped when that squall hit? Go on. Jim, I... All right, I... folks, go on about your business. Nothing more to see here. See what happens now. What happens now? Mr. Covey, you stay right in town where I can find you, and you get yourself a lawyer. Coogan busted me in college for speeding. Oh? Made me take a drunk test. Were you drunk? Nope. He knew it, too. He just did it to be a hard ass. Hmm. You better mind your P's and Q's then, pal. He's chief of the Arbor Bay Police now. That figures. So that was very passionate back there. I think you missed your calling. You should be in a courtroom. <laughs> I think I'll leave that to you. On the other hand, if a handsome stranger marries a local rich girl, and then she dies three months later. I think I'd want to take a look at the will myself. You are terrible. You know, it's very late. I think I'm going to take a rain check on lunch. But thank you, Elaine, for everything. I mean, not just getting us the house, but last summer, too. I don't think I would have made it without you. <laughs> you used to do better than that. Well, 
think that's what they call long-term memory. Mm -hmm. Signed books all afternoon. So, did you see the house? Yeah. It's an authentic sea captain's house. Big, bright, full of wood paneling. It has a widow's walk. It's even got a legend to go along with it. Oh, it sounds wonderful. Honey, I've wanted to live in this house since I was 17. Elaine did a real tap dance to get it for us. Mmm, can't wait to meet her. I know so little about your wild college days. What? Me? Wild? No. All I ever did was study and read the Bible. <sighs> sure you did. Hannah? Menley? Hannah? Honey? Hello? Hello? Sorry. I dropped the phone. It's okay. So where were we? Flight 211 for New York. Listen, they're boarding my flight. Listen, you are going to love Arbor Bay and you are going to love Remember House. Remember House? Sounds like a hospice for amnesia victims. <laughs> That's very good. I'll see you tonight, okay? I love you. Love you too, bye. <sighs> amnesia. I wonder where you go to get it, huh? Did you ever hear the wind in Remember House? It says, Remember. That's what you always say. I saw Tobias Knight. Oh, it was him all right. When Adam Nichols arrives, I'll ask him over. His wife writes children's books. Adam's wife must not live there. It's Mephitabel's house. show you this? Oh, uh, by the way, Elaine's gonna invite you to a party later, so if you go, you'll be meeting me. Okay. I'll just put this stuff upstairs. Oh. Like it? <laughs> like it, beyond words. <laughs> you know what the best part is? Hey. Hannah and I have you all to ourselves all summer. You. We don't really have to go to this thing, you know. Oh, yes, we do. I have waited years to meet your old college harem. You know, we're one mile away from Elaine, honey. There's really nothing to worry about. Maybe she could sleep on a bed or something, couldn't she? I guess not. What's the number here? Probably break this to you now. While you were in the shower, Emily called. Judge Day is recalling all the principals, so I got to go back to New York first thing in the morning. I'm sorry. Just for one night. Although I probably will have to go back a couple of times to finish this thing. Mm. You and Hannah want to come back with me? No, don't be silly. It's just my luck. Here I am. I have you all to myself with lust in my heart, and you have to go away again. Hmm. <laughs> Not in front of the KID. 
Um, I found the diapers, but can you show me where the talc is? Oh, sure. Oh, David and the Knights of the Round Table is Josh's favorite. He's drawn in it, he's slept with it, he's even taken a bath with it. <laughs> he wouldn't even know it was a book anymore. Well, thanks. You oh. made my day. <laughs> Menley, I'm Mary Clark, and a great fan of yours. Oh, thank you. I write a little bit myself. Really? Yes, and I just want to welcome you to Arbor Bay. I do hope you enjoy your visit here. Thank you very much. Oh, right. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Menley. Where is Elaine, anyway? Adam. Hey, Ted. How, How you doing? doing? My wife, good. Manley, Ted Ehrlich. Nice to meet you, Ted. Same here. Congratulations. For what? Well, for being Adam's new wife, I guess. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just the old wife. <laughs> oh, jeez. Open mouth and shirt foot. I'm sorry. Okay. When I saw Adam it's last okay. year. Ted and I went to law school together, honey. That's right. I'm a small town lawyer, and now he's F. Lee Bailey. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, um, you excuse me. Uh, I'll let you two talk about it. Sure, sure. I'm sorry, Ted. Okay. So, how long did you do? Uh, we just got back, actually. <laughs> Hello? Hello? I checked on Hannah about two minutes ago. She was sleeping like a baby. Of course, she is a baby, right? Did you have any trouble changing her? No. Did she eat all of her dinner? Mm -hmm. Did you go to bed okay? Everything's perfect. Quit worrying. You're right. Sorry, I'm I'm being a pest. Nah, you're just a mom. Okay, well, um, we'll be home soon. Okay, bye. Bye. You're in a foreign country. Everybody's speaking a foreign language, and you're wondering if you can call a cab and get out of Dodge. Uh, Elaine Archer. It's a pleasure to meet you. I've been on my office phone for the last half hour trying to close a sale. Some hostess, huh? Mm, that's okay. Oh, I, um, I wanted to thank you. The house is wonderful. Music to my ears. But I have a confession. I once had desperate designs on your husband. <laughs> As a matter of fact, there are three other women at this party alone who were madly in love with him. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, but by the way Adam talks about you, you don't have to worry about any of us. <laughs> Besides, I'm taken. The gorgeous man with the salt and pepper hair? His name is John. <laughs> he sells a lot of insurance. <laughs> Amy's father? Uh-huh. Yeah, she's not too thrilled about me. You know what I think? I think a girl doesn't mind her father getting married again, as long as it's to somebody he couldn't possibly find interesting after dark. <laughs> Come on. I'm going to throw your husband some business he won't want. Sorry. Star has bigger fish to fry. Now, I know a criminal lawyer spends his time defending people who are guilty as sin. You make deals. Is it murder? Is it manslaughter? You get people off on technicalities. Oh, you make it sound so romantic. But how often do you get a client who is charged with murder, who is completely and totally innocent? Barry Mason got that every week. Scott Covey? Adam and Manly Nichols. Hey, thank you. Thank you very much. For what? If I told you, you would have stayed home. See? I always do what I say I'll do. I really appreciate this. Appreciate what? The police. They're acting as if my wife's death was not an accident. Well, was it? Yes. I searched for her for two hours. I nearly drowned. What do they think? They think I could have stopped the storm? I don't know what they think. I need a lawyer. Well... Look, I know you're very expensive. I can afford it. Scott, um... 
I gotta go to New York tomorrow, but get my number from Elaine. Call me in a couple of days and we'll talk about it. Okay? Yeah. Adam will represent you, Scott. Okay. Like I said, I guess I will. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank my wife. So, want to tell me why I'm going to represent this guy? Because I know exactly how Scott Covey feels. It's a police mentality. Something bad can't just happen. They have to blame somebody. They did the same thing when they interrogated me after Bobby died. If I get nervous, I'll just call Amy to have her come stay with me. You know, maybe you should start some research on the new book tomorrow. Call Henry Sprague. Phoebe supposedly has piles of stuff on old houses. Maybe I will. Last call. Okay. Mm, Daddy misses you already, pumpkin head. Take care of mommy, okay? Bye. I love you. I'll call you tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> Say bye-bye to Daddy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, how does this sound? David was 10 years old when he went to sea in a beautiful four-masted brigantine. Oh, wow, where did that come from? I think mommy better do some research, huh? Yep, that's what I say. back anyway. Thanks for the help. I honestly thought that crossing light was flashing. I really did. I certainly didn't help you out by honking at you like that. Come on. What adult. Please stop apologizing. I was holding up traffic. Menley, you had an anxiety attack. For God's sake, it is completely understandable. Okay? Oh, boy, you cute thing. <laughs> Elaine, do me a favor and don't tell Adam. Adam who? Bye. Bye. Good night, sweetie. Mommy and Daddy love you very much.
cock. Oh, I didn't put you here. Oh, God, I didn't put you here. What's happening to me? You know, you look a little beat, honey. We should have just stayed home in our pajamas all day. <laughs> Not a chance. I have work to do. Got to start research on the moon cussers. Moon cussers? What are they? Robbers. They put up lights to lure the ships onto the rocks so they could rob them. Yeah. And then they stash the stuff in secret places. Uh -huh. They cussed the moon if it was out because the ships could see where they were going. I see. Hey. Oh, hi. Yeah. Hi. Adam, you remember Nat Coogan. Adam Nichols, his wife, Menley. Haven't seen you in a long time. One week. You were on the beach when we found Vivian Carpenter. I'll see you around. Take it nice and easy on the road there, counselor. Yeah. You used to have a thing for Vivian. Can you believe it? Really? That's interesting. Well, you two have papers to sign, and I have work to do. Bye -bye. See you later. Bye, Elaine. Okay. What? What's wrong? I hate to tell you this, but... are pictured in this book. And one of them... There it is. It's in New Bedford. It's a duplicate of Remember House. Except that the rooms are bigger. Um, the plans for your house no longer exist, but I could get you the ones for the New Bedford house. Oh, that would be great. Thanks. You're welcome. me. Mrs. Sprigg, I'm um, Menley Nichols, Adam's wife. I found your doll in Remember House, Mahitabel. It's beautiful. You found it in our house? Mahitabel Freeman, your child died, and you went mad and took your own life. Mrs. Fegg, I know that Mahedabel fell from the widow's walk. Are you saying that she committed suicide because her child died? You don't belong in that house. It's Mahedabel's house. Please don't go. I want to talk to you. All right, let's get one thing out of the way right up front. If they think they have a decent case against you, they're going to take it to the grand jury. If I'm going to have any chance of shooting them down, you have to level with me. I already have. I didn't do it. OK. But if they have a witness who sold you two tickets to Bimini under the name of John Smith the day before your wife died, I don't want it to be a surprise. There's nothing like that. I swear. Anything else you want to tell me? 
Come on, Scott. You might as well have a sign on your forehead. <sighs> All right. There was a girl. Tina Oraldi. Who is she? She was an apprentice at the theater last summer. And? And we had a thing. Before I met Viv, the thing is she came to the house a couple of times after Viv died. I guess Henry Sprague must have seen her come over because he told Coogan about her. Look, there's nothing going on between us. She realized just how messed up I was and she split. I didn't buy her a ticket to Bimini. I don't care about her. I love my wife. Okay. some videos from Elaine's collection, if you don't mind me using your VCR. No, sure. Hi, sweetie pie. She's all changed oh. and fed. Okay. We'll be at Blackburn's Tavern. The number is by the phone. Okay. okay. Bye, sweetie. Bye. <laughs> Mentally, how do you get up on the widow's walk? I don't know. Why? I thought I saw you standing up there just a couple minutes ago. You should be careful. It's pretty high up there. I don't know who you saw up there, but it wasn't me. You know Carrie, the cleaning lady? She says you guys have a ghost. But she's crazy. <laughs> have a good time. I don't want to go. Why did you tell Amy you weren't up on the widow's walk? Because I wasn't. You don't believe me? You think I'm lying? No, it's just that when I brought Hannah back from the beach earlier, I thought I saw you up there, too. Why didn't you mention it? I don't know. I thought you were just looking at the ocean or something. Well, I wasn't up there then, and I wasn't up there just now. I've never been up there. OK. I believe you. Thank you. Excuse me. Can I get my backpack? Sure. Sorry, Amy. We will pay you for tonight. Whatever you want. I'm going to go over to the Spriggs. Henry has some more material for me. Want me to walk with you? No. Uh, just put Hannah to bed. I'll do it. You pay me anyway. <laughs> Will you, uh, have a discussion with Elaine about this little incident, too? I beg your pardon? <laughs> Don't tell me she didn't tell you of my little adventure at the railroad crossing. All right, yes, she did, but she did that because she cares about you and because she cares about Hannah. And as a matter of fact, you should have been the one to tell me about that. Anything else like that happens, I need to know about it, okay? 
okay? Okay. What are you doing? Huh? Nothing. It was you up here before. Why did you lie to me? I didn't lie to you, Adam. I wasn't up here. You know what happened in this house. Why did you bring me here? Calling my lawyer. You can pull him out of a hat if you want. This is a search warrant. Hello? Hi. Um, sorry for the intrusion. I, I kept trying your phone. I have to see Adam. Sorry, I just put him on a plane. Come in. Thanks. Are you all right? No. I told Adam that Chief Coogan was out to get me. He just spent the last hour searching my house. You know what I think? If you don't have anything to hide, and I know you don't, the best thing to do is just smile and cooperate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think you just saved me from going in town and slugging the chief of police. <laughs> I don't think that would be a very wise idea. No. It's nice having someone to talk to. I think that's what I miss the most. You want a cup of coffee or something? No, oh, thanks. I think I've been enough trouble already. I think that I better get back and clean up the mess that Coogan left. Hey. Thanks. Sure. Bye. 
Manley, this is so cool. David just got kidnapped by Jesse James. I'm glad you're enjoying it. <laughs> Listen to this. This is from Mrs. Sprague's notes. Captain Andrew Freeman, convinced that the builder of his house, Tobias Knight, had betrayed him with his wife, Mehedabel, took their infant son and set out to sea where the child perished of an unknown illness. The adulteress Mehedabel received 40 lashes. Oh, ouch. But the judgment of the deacons was to commend Tobias Knight for the pious renunciation of his sin and sentenced him to pay the sum of $10 to the poor of the borough. Oh, great. She gets whipped, and he gets, like, a parking ticket. And then she died. You want to let Mommy write? Come on. Why don't you watch Amy make your lunch? OK. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. But you can't imagine anything more fun than that, can you? Yes, you can, stinky baby. hallucinations and dreams and someone just tell you about it? Somebody told me about it. A, a woman with Alzheimer's. What am I saying? It's all right. I want you to get hold of yourself, and I want you to talk to me some more, okay? Okay. Okay. Now, Menly, start from the beginning. Yeah. 
Hello? Hey, I'm at the airport. Got an earlier flight. Can you come pick me up? Why don't you get Elaine to do it? Elaine have the tape of Bobby. What? Amy found it and brought it to me. It's not bad enough that you talked to Elaine behind my back. Now you gave her a tape of our dead son. No, I did not give her the tape. I didn't even know that she had it. Did you two watch it together? I haven't even watched it. No, we didn't. Are you interested in hearing how I think she might have gotten it? Yes, please, tell me. I brought it with me last summer. I probably left it in the house. I couldn't watch it either. Manly? Oh. See you guys tomorrow. OK, well, I gather you think I'm lying, right? I don't know what I think. As long as we're on the subject of being honest with each other, I talked to Dr. Kingsley today. How dare you call my doctor? Why didn't you tell me you were having post-traumatic stress episodes of some kind? <laughs> Is that what she called it? Post-traumatic stress episode? No, that's my term. She actually said possible psychotic episodes. Oh, I see. So you two have decided that I'm crazy? Nobody thinks you're crazy. You just need some help. That's all. She wants me to go back in the hospital. Is that it? That's it, isn't it? And what do you think, Adam? You're suddenly this expert on psychiatry. Do you think I need to go back into the hospital? Some more aggressive therapy might not hurt. A new course of medication, that's all we're talking about. We're talking about me being hospitalized under strict supervision, being separated from my child. I have been there, Adam, and I am not going back. last night. I missed you. So, Scott's coming over this morning. Go over the case, and then I had a meeting with the district attorney this afternoon. So, I'm trying to decide between a sport coat that will make me seem unconcerned with appearances or a power suit that will make a statement. What do you think? We're having domestic chit-chat. Lovely. Well, I think I'm going to wash my hair and bake some brownies. And after that, I think I'll be committed. Good morning. Oh, I couldn't sleep, so I thought maybe we could start work a little early today. Yeah, let's work in the living room. You're not hearing me. I said they're not right. I. It's okay. I'll wait till you're off the phone. Wait, uh, Ted, 
Ted, I'm gonna call you back. Yeah, okay. You just closed my office. Yes, I did. You wanna tell me why? Elaine, you've been very nice to me from the moment we met, and I appreciate that. But? But, first you betrayed my confidence, and now it appears you had an item in your possession which belongs to me. Now, there's nothing I can do about your telling Adam about my little episode at the railroad crossing. I wouldn't have betrayed your confidence, but that doesn't matter. I filed it away under reasons why this person is not my friend. I told Adam because I was very concerned for your baby. No, you did it because you think you have seniority with my husband. Well, you may have known him longer, but he didn't marry you. He married me. <laughs> Fine. Touche. Now, what item of yours did I have? Our videotape. What were you doing with it? I found it in Adam's rental last summer. Really? Why didn't you return it? Um, I guess I just forgot, okay? Did you and Adam watch it together? <sighs> no. But even if we had, you were separated. <laughs> so he was fair game. <laughs> you bet he was. Well, he's not anymore. scared to death? Yeah, well, Adam is really good. He never loses. <laughs> That's right, to be the first. What about you? Are you all right? No. I'm afraid I'm losing my family and my husband and my doctor want to put me back in the hospital. Okay, here's what I've got. The Coast Guard says if Vivian Covey drowned off Seaport Island, her body would have washed up on South Beach, not on Arbor Bay. Vivian Covey was an experienced sailor. Experienced sailors do not ignore storm warnings. Scott Covey's bank balance was under $1,000, two months before he got married. After his wife's death, he inherited $5 million. Scott Covey had a girlfriend named Tina Aroldi. He was hot and heavy with her till he got married. After his wife's death, she visited his house on two occasions. Scott Covey lived with his wife in her house for six months. There is not one picture not one sign of her in that house. All right. All right. Mr. Nichols. Well, first of all, there have been three other fatal accidents in that same spot in the last 20 years because the currents are so unpredictable. So that the body should have washed up on South Beach is a matter of opinion, which I will refute. Also, there's absolutely no evidence whatsoever that Scott Covey was seeing Tina Aroldi while he was married. In fact, she will testify that she went to his house trying to resume the romance, and he sent her away. This is a very sweet girl, Mr. Lang. Furthermore, Scott Covey almost lost his life diving in rough seas for over two hours trying to find his wife. And finally, there is one other thing I will have to bring up. 
Chief Coogan was once in love with Vivian Covey. <clears throat> well, I don't believe we have all the answers in this case yet, Mr. Nichols. So there'll be no grand jury at this time. Chief, back to the drawing board. No hard feelings, I hope? No. You were just doing your job. But I'm gonna keep mine. I'm not through. Yeah, there are still people who think the Earth is flat, Chief. Doesn't mean they're right. The difference is the Earth isn't flat. But Scott Covey is a murderer. I'm done with Scott. Tomorrow I'll be done with Susan Portman. You can start thinking about getting back to New York. And um, getting you back into therapy with Dr. Kingsley. You're working under two of them's assumptions, Adam. One, that I intend to leave here. And two, that I ever intend to see Dr. Kingsley again. Manly, you're suffering severe anxiety attacks. You are hallucinating. You tell me you think the house is haunted. Are you saying that this is normal behavior? No. What I am saying is that I would like to finish our time here, and then I'd like to find a doctor who doesn't blab everything I tell her and threaten me with going back into the hospital. Nobody is threatening you. We are talking about a couple of weeks. If I had to be separated from Hannah even for one day, I really would go crazy. I'll get a lawyer, Adam. I'll fight you on this. I really will. Manly, listen to me. You don't know what it was like in that hospital. No, I don't. I only know what it's like in this house. You are not the only one that suffered a loss here. I did, too. But I am learning to live with it. Why can't you? Because you didn't give birth to him, and you didn't kill him. Neither did you! It was an accident! Scott, hi, how are you? You had just missed Adam. You left for the airport already. Actually, I, I didn't come to see Adam. I came to see you. I wanted to say goodbye. Bye. Where are you going? I'm off to California. You were a real friend in need. You were for me, too. It's a great old house. Viv and I, we looked at this place a few days before she... We loved it as much as you. Hey, look at that. This is great. I would love to get a copy of this. Please, take it. Really? Absolutely. Even though I do have this 
terrific sentimental attachment to it, since it was a gift from Elaine. Please, take it. It would make me happy. Thanks. That means a lot. Morning. Tobias Knight lied about the Hitterbell. Yes, ma'am. So it's all over with Scott Covey, I understand. Yes, yeah, so it appears. Oh, you're half an hour late if you're looking for him. He just drove off for California. You should never leave your garage door unlocked. <laughs> Open invitation to a thief. Amy, did you put this tape on my desk? No, I haven't touched it. Here's your bear. Yes. You want to see him? What are you doing? Remember I told you about the moon cussers? Yeah. You know where they hid their loot? They built these secret rooms into their houses so that the inside dimensions didn't match up with the outside. Really? Hmm. You wanna go see if it's true? Yeah, I do. service every day I use it. The 
in the movies, they just push a button and the whole wall like rotates. My turn. I'm going over to the Sprites. Give Hannah a dinner, okay? Okay. Please try to understand me. You've been trying to tell me something, and I want to know if this is right, okay? When Tobias Knight was questioned by the authorities about robbing a ship called the Goodspeed, they told him he'd been seen entering Captain Freeman's house at night, right? He told them that he was going there to commit adultery with Mahedabel, which set this whole tragedy in motion, right? I've seen Tobias Knight. Yes, I know you have. But please, listen. Tobias wasn't going there to see Mahedabel, was he? He was going there because he hid the loot from the Goodspeed inside the house. Isn't that true? He ruined the Freeman's lives and caused the baby to die just to save his own skin, didn't he? A very bad man. Is that what you've been trying to tell me? That Tobias lied and Mahedabel is innocent? Yes, it's true. <sighs> There's a woman in my house, and I want you to ask her to leave, Mahedabel. Come with me. There she is. Make her leave. It's all right, love. I'll speak to her. Mrs. Sprague, do you know how to find the entrance to the hidden room in Remember House? Is that where you found the doll? I'm hungry. Can I have dinner now? All right, dear. Come along. Excuse us, please. to that question, Adam. Yeah. Henley, I love you. All right, I'll be home in a while. Yes. Menley, it's Elaine. Tell Amy to get over here right now, please. Her dad's having difficulty breathing. I called the paramedics, but they're swamped tonight, so we aren't here yet. I'm coming, honey. Stay calm, please. Just stay calm. I have to go. Please tell Amy. Right. Your father's having difficulty breathing. Oh my god. She's called the paramedics. You should get over there right I away. Will. Oh my god. I feel bad leaving you, Mel. Don't be silly. 
Get on over there. Be careful on the roads. here. Thank <laughs> you. 
see me. You were playing the tapes? Get up. <laughs> we're friends. Get up! Adam's on his way home. Adam's in New York. He's coming from Boston. Well, he's not here now. You think I want to do this? I have to. Now get up! <laughs> I think I broke my leg. I don't care! Why are you playing that tape? What were, where are you going to take me? Can't you figure it out? You killed your wife, didn't you? <laughs> you have Adam to thank for this, you know? <gasps> you and I planned this? He got you off and in return you were supposed to get rid of me? Don't be ridiculous. Adam thinks I'm innocent. It's Elaine. She's in love with him. Elaine. Come on. Don't you get it? Elaine got tired of waiting for him, so she decided to get rid of you. Oh my God. What's your reason? What did I ever do to you? Nothing. She knew I was guilty, so she blackmailed me. So, what was the idea that you would drive me around the bend and then I'd go back into the hospital? Something like that. So what were you gonna do? Take me over to the widow's walk, make it look like suicide. Me, the head of hell, no one, no one would have even questioned it, not even Adam. How about that? He takes her licking and he keeps on ticking. Mary, Mary, 
the paramedics to remember us. Right now. Where you been, paramedics? Pointing upstairs. Elaine was with the photographer when he was taking aerial photos of the various properties that she had on the market. So when she realized that she's got a picture of Scott Covey on his boat at the exact time that he said he was trying desperately to save his wife, she knew she had the goods on him. She's tough. If I was ever in an alley fight, I'd want her along. <laughs> That's what I keep trying to tell him. <laughs> tell me I was right, Counselor. I got to give it to you, Chief. You were right. Thanks. Uh, well, you two take care of each other, and uh, I got one more thing I got to do tonight. You forgive me. Scott Covey just took a Brody off the widow's walk at Remember House, Elaine. Trying to kill Mrs. Nichols. Somehow your name came up. You have the right to remain silent and refuse to answer questions. Goodbye, house. See you soon, I hope, I hope. Hey, we'll come up a few thousand. Bank will come down a few thousand. We'll get it. It's a gold mine of stories, Manly. The best David book ever. <laughs> yeah. Ill-gotten gains, adulterous triangles, betrayal, lust. And that's just the real estate agent. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget she scared me half to death, so we'd be thinking my dad was having a heart attack. If any of your other old girlfriends show up, I'm going to shoot first and ask questions later. I'll tell you what I am going to write about before I get around to David. Thanks for the help, Mahedabelle. You know what I'm going to write about, don't you? Maybe if I uh, tell the world her soul really can find peace. I'm going to miss you guys. Get me, Hannah.